Perth experienced its fastest selling month since May 2014, taking a median of 28 days, down from 55 days just a year ago. Now, CoreLogic's latest home value index shows dwelling values in Perth increased in September, but let's break down all the details in this month's market update. G'day guys, my name's Tim Guest, and welcome to our market update video series where you can stay up to date with the markets that matter and find out what's happening in your local area. Now, please remember to like, comment, and share this video, and if it's your first time tuning in, don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you are seeing this. So September marked a striking turn in housing market sentiment. Consumer confidence increased, new listings rose, and six of the eight capital cities recorded a rise in home values over the month. However, falling values in Melbourne and Sydney, which make up approximately 40% of Australia's housing stock by number and 55% by value, pushed the national reading into a fifth straight month of decline. Now, CoreLogic September Home Value Index results showed a 0.1% fall in dwelling values nationally. This was comprised of a 0.2% drop in the combined capitals index and a 0.4% rise in the combined regionals index. Now, although the national index was down over the month, CoreLogic data shows dwelling values in Perth increased 0.2% in September. Rebra President Damien Collins said, Darlington saw the biggest increase to its median in September with a 4.9% increase, which was followed by Armidale up 4.7%, Swan View up 4.5%, Rockingham up 3.9% and Padbury up 3%. Mr. Collins said, one in four suburbs experienced sales activity growth, with Seville Grove recording the biggest increase followed by Dinella, Shoalwater, Wembley Downs and Laming. Now, Mr. Collins also said, with prices on the rise, net migration at the highest level since March 2014 and record low interest rates, there has never been a better time in many years for investors and home buyers to get into the market. Now, rental listings in Perth continued to drop in September, falling 8% to under 3,000 rental properties over the month, the lowest it's been since 2012, and that's according to rewa.com data. Mr. Collins said, what started as a re reasonable rental shortage has quickly changed to a severe rental shortage, and we are now on the brink of a rental crisis. With Perth's vacancy rate sitting at 1.3%, it's no surprise that we are seeing listings for rent continue to lower. In addition, a number of our regional members are reporting vacancy rates close to zero. So the impact is being felt across the entire state, Mr Collins said. Now, leasing days. Well, that was also notably faster in September, taking a median of 19 days to lease a property in Greater Perth, making it the quickest time to lease since June 2013. The median rent has remained stable at $360 a week. However, one out of three suburbs in Greater Perth experienced increases to their median rent in September, with Queens Rock, North Perth, Dinella and Como the top performers. The data also revealed four out of ten, uh, sorry, four out of the top ten suburbs experienced the highest increase in rental demand and had a median rent price at or above four hundred dollars a week, and that being Cottesloe, Inlow, Piara Waters, and Nedlands. Mr. Collins said, with population growth returning closer to long-term average levels in Western Australia, the state government needs to encourage investment in property to accommodate returning expats and existing tenants. There is the possibility we'll run out of properties next year unless something is done to entice investors back and encourage first home buying in established areas. Well guys, that's it from me today. Now, please remember to comment, like, and share this video, and don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Have a great week, and remember guys, there is only one thing in life that makes a difference, and that's action. Thanks a lot, and bye for now.